Hi everyone, my name's Caitlin and I'm the copywriter for the Wonder Jam. Um, we'll be covering a lot of great stuff today, all in the department of pairing your copy, also known as your writing, um, with your visuals, which could be graphics or photos, video, what have you. So whether you're working with a graphic designer or doing both the design and the copy all by yourself, what we'll be covering today will definitely apply to your brand either way. So a lot of the information I've referenced during this segment might be a little bit confusing when you first read it. So I wanted to take the time to go over some of the examples that I reference. So let's get started. So writing copy with visuals can be confusing, um, especially when you're not sure if the design or the copy doc should come first. Sometimes when you're working on an ebook or, um, or a sales sheet, um, that's an instance where you would write copy first. However, when you have um, a landing page or something that's a little bit more design heavy, then you're going to want um, some sort of a mock-up or a rough sketch or a wireframe, whatever your designer does for you. Um, this is important. So, um, this way you know the space that you're dealing with. So what's super helpful um, is, you know, nothing crazy. Uh, these aren't anything special, but what they give you is an idea as to where your headline might go, for example. Um, so, let's take a look here. So this first one that I'm showing you is pretty straightforward. You know, you have... Um, a website header so you know exactly where that's going to go, the main navigation, the text area. Again, this is just to give you an idea of what space you're dealing with because you might think to yourself before you start working on something, you might think that you have more space than you're actually given. So this is super important. Um, and again, it really doesn't matter what kind of document you work off of. If it's if it looks like this, that's totally fine. Um, and your designer should put this together for you or you should work together on this. Um, or you can honestly go with what Adam does, which is just writing something down on a piece of paper. This is a landing page mock-up, super easy, nothing crazy. Um, this one's a website mock-up. Um, which is hilarious, um, but whatever works for you. So let's go ahead and move on from this here. So once you've ironed out what design will look like, you're going to want to write the actual copy. The next thing I'm going to show you is how to structure these copy docs. So this might sound silly, but having organization and structure to your copy docs is super important, even if you're both the designer and the copywriter. You never know if you're going to write some gibberish down on a Word doc one day, totally thinking you're going to remember it a week from now, and then you're not sure if you wanted something as a call out or a headline or a subhead, what have you. So it's especially important to create a structured doc when you're working with a designer. Um, you definitely don't want them guessing where you want everything because that's not fair. Um, so let's take a look at the Wonder, Jam the Wonder Jam's website. Um, in their gossip page. Um, so we have, let's just use this little bit of copy here. And then let's open up an example copy doc I created. So as you can see, you have your headline, you have a subhead, and you have your body copy. All of these are in brackets, so it's super easy for the designer to decipher what it is you're writing for and where it should go in your mock-up. Um, and ideally, you want your um, whatever's in brackets to match what they have in their wireframes or their mockups that they made for you, just so that they know you guys are on the same page. So, okay, so we have a headline. We heard it through the grapevine. So if you look at the Wonder Jams website, you'll see headlines right here. Big, bold, just gives you an idea of what you're getting into, but really just grabs your attention. So then we have the subhead, kind words from clients. As you can see, it's this little itty bitty text underneath the headline. Again, it's like another way to tell the customer what they're seeing on the page. Doesn't have to be anything crazy, just gives you an idea of what you're looking at. So then we have the actual body copy, which is all this text under here. Super intuitive nothing insane. 
Um, very easy stuff. So you can use whichever word you like. Some say strap instead of subhead. Um, all that matters is that you're mapping out where you want your copy. So it should make sense to you and your graphic designer. There's nothing wrong with over explaining either. Include as much information as you need. Um, your designer will definitely thank you for this. So let's go ahead and exit out of here. Okay, so the last few things I want to share with you are some fun examples of headlines and callouts. Um, as I explained in the text, headlines often put a lot of pressure on copywriters and vice versa. The point of a headline is to grab the reader's attention, so it makes sense when we get nervous writing them. Uh, but the headline doesn't have to be the be-all, end-all. Um, it just needs to be fun and have something to do with what you're talking about. So I'm going to show you some examples here. So the first example is from Mod Cloth, um, and their headline reads, Go Off the Grid. It doesn't really say anything other than grid, which you're like, what does that mean? But as you can see in the image, it works really well because it's a bunch of um, like a plaid gingham kind of pattern. Um, so that makes a lot of sense. The headline doesn't have to tell you everything that the audience is getting into. It's just a cute way of enticing somebody to read more. So that's when the strap comes in or the subhead. Um, what's on our spring checklist? Gorgeous, gorgeous gingham, fresh silhouettes, and plenty of time to daydream. So you're kind of in the scenario where the strap or the subhead is really doing the heavy lif lifting for you. They're explaining why you made the headline what you did. So that's one example. Another example is from uh, Sugarfina, which I love. This one is their candy company, basically. And their headline reads, Sugar, Spice, and Everything Vice, which I love. Um, so this is just something super cute. Nothing like super telling. Um, it just kind of hints at something, which is all that you need. You just want something to be enticing so that they read on. So it says, introducing bourbon bears. Our yummy gummy bears get a splash of Kentucky's finest sing single barrel bourbon, making them a must for your Valentine. Um, again, Strap did all the heavy lifting. Um, it was really just the headline to get you in there. So Let's also look at Bandeau here. And their stuff's always really cute, so I'll zoom in a little bit. So the headline is, we like to drink it, drink it. Uh, think about it this way, new drinkware means more coffee and more wine, right? So what I really wanna talk about with Bandeau's example um, is the get these straws for your next party se uh, section. And the reason I want to call this out is because there is a part of the segment, the words of visuals um, segment, where we talk about callouts. Callouts can be super confusing if you don't already know what they are. Um, basically, this is a good example of a callout. Um, it's just a way of inserting your copy where it doesn't really fit into the subhead or the strap. It's just exactly what it is, um, a call out. So that's a nice little example. So the last thing I want to cover concerns the less is more approach to copywriting. If we take a look at Bando's subhead up here, um, it's pretty clear that they're not super concerned with grammar, and that's totally cool. They get the point across, and that's all that matters. The audience already sees a huge assortment of mugs and cups and straws, what have you. Their message is to get you to buy as many as you'd like, um, and they achieved it with one or two lines of copy. So you want to aim for bite-sized pieces of info here and there, or else your audience will get super bored very quickly. So they said, think about it this way. New drinkware means more coffee and more wine, right? Super cute. Um, they didn't write a huge paragraph. They just got the point across. So when all else fails, remember to eliminate everything that's unnecessary to your marketing. This is also known as trimming the fat or eliminating the fluff. So thank you so much for listening, guys. I hope these examples help clear up any questions you may have with our Words with Visual segment.